Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be chapter 6 on the book of Enoch, uh, the one by Charles. There's more than one supposedly book of Enoch. Uh, some of them are total fakes. This one I'm on the fence of, you know, I have not read, like I said in the introduction, I haven't read this since the 90s. And I was a new believer in the 90s. And there was some things I believed were true. And then there were some other things I thought, yeah, this is way out there. I don't know. But uh, most people, when they disagree with Enoch, what the thing they disagree with is the angels mating with the women thing. Now, I did an entire study on the angels that sinned, Genesis 6, the sons of God, daughters of men. Not one time, not zero times do I ever quote the book of Enoch. Zero. I don't need the book of Enoch to prove what happened in Genesis 6. But people don't want to believe that. So... Let's take a look at a couple of things, and uh, then we'll start reading the Book of Enoch. Now, I'm going to leave a link to my Sons of God playlist. And if you don't believe that the Sons of God in Genesis 6 were angels, may I strongly suggest you... Go to that playlist and go through it. And about five or six hours later, you will know that the sons of God in the Old Testament were angels. In the New Testament, we don't become sons of God until we are born of the Spirit. You know, born again, born of above, of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is called the only begotten begotten son of God. And then Adam was called a son of God because guess what? God was his father. I guess you could say Mother Earth was his mother, but uh, you could say that. But I I, uh, I don't necessarily wouldn't believe, believe in that, but uh, some people would say that. Because after all, who was his mother? Who was his father? And in Luke chapter, I think it's Luke 3, that uh, Adam is called the Son of God, or a Son of God. I'd have to look that up, but he is called that. So, but New Testament, believers are not called sons of God until the New Testament. Absolutely not. All right, so let's take a look. In Genesis 6, we ask, who are the sons of God in Genesis 6 before the flood of Noah? So maybe we should read that real quick. All right, so let's read Genesis 6. I, you know, I have to assume that... People are not familiar with all this material. And I feel like I got to start at the beginning and then build up to it. Some people say I'm long-winded, but hey, you want to learn? All right, so let's take a look. All right, Genesis 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. And if you look up sons of God translated into Hebrew, it's actually Ben Elohim. And Elohim is a name for God. 
So that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And if you look up the word Adam, it's a racial description. You know, when uh, Cinderella, you know, the, or I'm sorry, Snow White, the queen was her magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Well, it's Snow White. Snow White, W-H-I-T-E. And they try to change the meaning of fair. You know, somebody has a fair complexion. Oh, that just means beautiful. Uh, no, it's a racial description. So, just like Adam is. And Central Africans are not fair. They're just not, they don't have a fair complexion. I'm talking, yeah, Central Africa. All right. So the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now, they will try to, those that deny all this will, or I should say hide all this, because they don't want you to know. They're going to tell you that all the men were holy and righteous, and they were sons of God. But all those women, they were daughters of men. They were, they were wicked unbelievers. So all the men were righteous believers, and all the women were evil unbelievers. And then they had giants for children. Because, you know, when believers and unbelievers get married and have kids, they're always giants, right? And then they get contracts to play in the NBA. Yeah, This is the kind of nonsense that uh, permeates the so-called church world. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Do you know prior to this, people lived hundreds of years? Hundreds of years. Some people theorize that there was a water canopy that was over the earth that filtered out all the harmful radiation of the sun. And when you look at it, these people that lived hundreds of years, I mean, it's possible that Adam knew his great, 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 great grandson. Yeah, you know, you live five, six hundred years. You know, Methuselah was what, like eight or nine hundred years old? How many... How many great, 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 great grandchildren did he have and, and know? You know, uh, really, think about it. And oh, by the way, um, there's a chart. I posted a link on the community page um, where it shows how long everybody lived and, you know, everybody that knew everybody. I mean, Adam probably knew, you know, there's a possibility that uh, Adam probably knew Methuselah. Maybe not his whole life, but, you know. How long from the time of Adam to the flood? I don't know. Anybody's guess is as good as mine. So, but here it is. After, uh, well, just before the flood, the Lord says he's going to, Limit man's lifespan to 120 years. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. Yeah. Goliath. Remember? Goliath. David and Goliath. Yeah. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. So there were giants before the flood and there were giants after the flood. 
Well, let me tell you something, people. They have found giant skeletons all over the earth, all over the place. And there were newspaper clippings with pictures from a hundred years ago that show these giant skeletons. And they were in museums. The museum, uh, I think it was uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, had a large skeleton in there and it was removed. I, th I think it was in there, I think they removed it in the 50s. I'm not sure. But I mean, the exhibits, you know, they've got all over the world. All over the world. And they've hidden all this stuff. They don't want us to know. You know, you get a skeleton that's 12 foot tall or long. You know, they don't want people saying, wow, the Bible was right about that. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, they became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Huh. You ever heard of Paul Bunyan? And Babe, you know, he was the giant lumberjack. Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack the Giant Killer. Uh, let's see. Hercules. You know, Hercules was the uh, son of, uh, I think it was what, Zeus and a human woman? Yeah, Zeus couldn't keep it in his pants. So, uh, you know, he was always... Uh, checking out all those hot human babes and uh, decided he wanted a little bit. And uh, yeah, and that's how Hercules was born. And do you ever notice Hollywood when they do a movie? I mean, if they were truly God's chosen people, wouldn't they do a movie about Samson, a Bible character? But they don't. No, they do Hercules, the son of Zeus. Yeah. You ever heard of the Titans? They were the uh, giant children of the gods and humans. So, uh, let's see, what other? Oh, Odin, the Norse god of lightning. Oh, I think Zeus, I think Zeus was the god of lightning too, wasn't he? I think so. But what was, what was Thor? Thor was the son of Odin, Odin, and a human woman. And what was he? He was the god of thunder. The god of thunder. So what does Hollywood do? They have, they don't, you know, like I said, they don't have movies on Samson, a Bible character. No, they do movies on Thor and Hercules. Well, why is that? Yeah, why is that, Chaplain Bob? That's a good point there. Now, I forget who uh, told me this and made a point. And I appreciate it. I really do. It makes sense. Odin was the god of lightning, and I think Zeus was too. Zeus would cast down lightning bolts upon his enemies. So, uh, let's see. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus speaking, verse 18, And he, Jesus, said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Yeah, Zeus uh, throws down those lightning bolts and Odin was the uh, god of lightning and Thor was the god of thunder. You know, the Japanese royal family says that they are the... Uh, Children of the gods that came down from heaven. 
Believe it or not, they do. Uh, if you talk to their sword makers, they'll tell you that thousands of years ago, the gods came down from heaven and taught them how to make steel swords. And they've looked at some of the Japanese steel swords from hundreds and or thousands of years ago. And let me tell you something. They are extremely high quality, even and by today's standards, they're extremely high quality. I mean, unbelievable. Of course, some of those sword makers will tell you it took a month to make a one sword. Because what they would do is they would uh, fold the metal and beat on it. And the when you beat on it, all the impurities would fly off. And when you're finished, all you would have is carbon steel. Where is that in the Bible? Well, in Genesis chapter 4, and this is going to tie into Enoch 2. Uh, Genesis 4, 21. Uh, we're talking about the lineage of Cain. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all, such as handle the harp and organ. Uh, when you read, I think it's Ezekiel, Satan was talked about uh, with pipes. He was, uh, maybe he was one of the head musicians. I don't know. We'll read, we're going to read about that a little later. So, Verse 22, And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer, an instructor. So he not only was a smith, he was a teacher, an instructor of every artificer. And an artificer is more than a blacksmith. I mean, you're talking an artist, art, artificer. An instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. What is steel? Steel's just iron with carbon in it. I don't know the exact formula, but uh, when you take iron and you add carbon to it, it becomes approximately 10 times stronger. You know, ladies, have you ever taken a cast iron pan and dropped it on a uh, tile floor? It'll, it'll, it'll shatter. Iron's brittle. It's heavy and it's brittle. But you take it, melt it down, throw in some carbon, some uh, like charcoal or what have you, mix it all up, pull it out, and you got steel. And steel, 10 times stronger, and it'll bend. It's not, uh, it's not brittle like iron. And according to the Japanese, the gods came down from the sky and taught them how to make this stuff. And we're going to read about that in the book of Enoch. One of the angels taught uh, how to do this. You know, it's funny. The book of Enoch, the Bible, and history and legends seem to all kind of match up at times. Not always, but, you know. So let's go back to Genesis 6. Verse 4, And there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Ah, this just hit me. I love it. Those that deny that the sons of God are angels will tell you, oh, they're righteous men. They're righteous men. 
But here in verse 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. So which is it? Are they wicked men or are they righteous men? Take your pick. The sons of God cannot be men. Impossible. If they're righteous, then in verse 5 it says they were the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. All right. So you're still not convinced, huh? Well, let's go to Job 38. Book of Job, chapter 38. Verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? You know, uh, you don't know what you're talking about, Job. You got dark counsel with words, but you don't know what you're talking about. You don't have any knowledge. Gird up now thy loins like a man. You know, put your pants on. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. So I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to give me an answer. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? If thou hast understanding. Yeah, where were you when I created the earth? You weren't even born yet. Job, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? You know, these are construction terms. Whereupon are their foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Oh boy, those uh, Masonic Lodge members, they love that lay that cornerstone in, sim you know, symbolically, right? So we're talking about the foundation of the earth, the earth being created, okay? Mankind wasn't even around. Job wasn't around. This is the, the subject, verse 6. Whereupon are, there, are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, how can the sons of God be humans when God just created, when they, they shouted for joy at the creation or the foundation of the earth? Can somebody explain this to me? They can't be humans because they're shouting for joy at the foundation of the earth. Guess what? Adam didn't come until after the earth was created. Because God took the dust of the earth, formed him a body, breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. So, God created the earth. Adam came later. But according to this, the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. So they had to have existed prior to the earth. It's kind of hard to shout for joy when you don't even exist. You know? So, which is it? Are the sons of God godly men that are wicked? Or are they angels? I mean, use a little bit of logic here, people. You know, that's why I have zero respect for these people that try to hide this information from everybody. Zero. Well, I don't know. I, I kind of think those sons of God, they're, they're, they're just righteous men. And, and they're all righteous, and all those women are wicked, and then they had children, and, and then they have giants for kids. 
with six fingers and six toes, and then God says, go into the land and kill them all. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Well, I guess if you go to John Hagee's church, maybe, I don't know. So, all right, let's go to Genesis 2. Verse 1, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. So I guess the host is the the stars, probably angels, and who, you know, whatever. All right, verse 2, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. And no, God didn't uh, rest because he was tired. So, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made that the Lord God made the heaven, uh, made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. There was not a man to till the ground. So how could uh, the sons of God... Be shouting for joy before the earth is created. In Job 38, impossible. It couldn't happen. They have to be angels. There's no other way around it. Angels exist. Man didn't. Verse 6, But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So, you know, Adam can't exist before the earth. Impossible. And the sons of God are shouting for joy at the creation of the earth. So how can they be men? They can't. It's impossible. Uh, you know, use some brains. You know, and I'm not talking about you people, just, you know. Sadly, these people want to shoehorn the children of the devil into God's kingdom. That's, that's what they want to do. See, they, that's why they hate the book of Enoch. Because the book of Enoch is really plain about what happened in Genesis 6. I mean, it's, it's plain and simple and out there. So they say, well, I didn't like the book of Enoch. Well, I don't use the book of Enoch to prove Bible doctrine. I use the Bible. But the thing they want to do is they want to take, uh, they want to take New Testament letters to one group of people and apply them to another group of people. You know, uh, I'm sorry. God wrote the Bible to the children of Adam for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they want to throw the Bible, a letter written to them, and, and go to Mongolia. Uh, God, I didn't. I don't read anywhere where God said Mongolia. You know, Paul was even told not to go to Asia, but they won't. Re oh, they won't. Oh, they won't. Want, they don't want you to know that. When did Paul go to Korea, China, Mongolia, India? He didn't. He went to Greece. He went to Italy. He went to the Middle East. He didn't go to Korea, Vietnam. He didn't go there. Sheesh. All right, so there was not a man to till the ground, verse 6, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. 
And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, where he put the man whom he had formed. So, Genesis 6, what is it? Are the sons of God good, righteous men that are evil? Ugh. You know, no, they're not. They're angels. So, let's take a look at a few things here. All right, sons of God. How about, let's read about these giants. 2 Samuel 21, verse 20. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where there uh, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. Very interesting. So do we see any unbelievers running around with six fingers and six toes? Uh, believe it or not, there's some tribes and uh, engine tribes in the West of America. And there's some people, there's some groups of people in India that have uh, six digits. And from what I understand, Marilyn Monroe had six toes. Oprah has six toes. And I heard Halle Berry has six toes. Hmm. Let's see. All three of those are Hollywood people. Yeah. What a coincidence, huh? Yeah. Let's do another movie about Hercules. Yeah, but we're God's chosen people, but we're not going to do a movie on Samson. We're going to do a movie on Hercules. You know, the gods that came down and did the women and had a, you know, Hercules, the super strong guy. Yeah. Yeah. How about First Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 4? And it came to pass after this that there arose war, W-A-R, war at Gezer with the Philistines. Remember, Goliath was a Philistine. At which time Sibichai the Hushafite slew Sipiai, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. Now, why is why, why is Israel having war? Why does it why doesn't God tell them? Oh, I want I, I love these giants. You know, they're just poor, misguided, and, and they don't know about Jesus. Please go in and, and, and tell them about how I love them and I want to save them. No, there's war. God says, go into the land and kill them all. all right, seriously. 2 Samuel 21, 18. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibachai the Hushathite slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. Boy, this guy was a real... The Sibichai, whatever, I'm probably mispronouncing the name, but he sounds like he was one badass uh, <laughs> dude, you know. I know, badass is not exactly a Bible, yeah. But uh, that, that's the kind of guy, that's the kind of guy you want to marry your daughter and, and for a protector, you know what I mean? Guy killed two giants. Huh. Chronicles 20 and verse 6, and yet again there was war, 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 war at Gath, where it was a man of great stature whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he also was the son of a giant. So God wanted war with the children of the wicked human women who didn't want to believe? Is, 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 is that what, that's what they teach? All these women that didn't believe they had they had children that were six fingers and six toes and they were giants. And God said, "Go in and kill them all." Yeah, why didn't God send evangelists? So where are all these giants today? Huh? Ask the people that tell you that the sons of God of Genesis six are just, you know, 
righteous men will ask them, where's these people, these giants with six fingers and six toes today? You know? Deuteronomy chapter 7, not politically correct. Verse 1, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and oh, by the way, Esau, Jacob's brother, married two Hittites. Yeah, he married them. And has and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, the Canaanites, the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them. You know what it means to smite them? It means take your sword and strike them dead. Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Wow. God, you're really cruel, Lord. Well, why, don't, why don't you have us send some evangelists and tell them about the love of Jesus? I mean, God loves everybody. Doesn't God love everybody? What do you mean we shall go in and smite them and utterly destroy them? That doesn't sound like you, God. God's, God loves everybody. I don't think so. Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant. Don't make any agreements with them. Don't, don't make any promises with them. Don't make a covenant. Don't nothing. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Wow. Don't show them any mercy. What? But God loves everybody. Verse 3, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Don't make any marriages with them. You don't believe God didn't like that? Read Ezra chapter 9. Ezra chapter 9. Thou sh thou, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Hmm. So were all the men, the sons of God, good holy people, and all the daughters, the women of men were evil and wicked? This is what 90% of all the churches teach today. Does this make any sense? How can believers and unbelievers have giants for children? Why would God destroy the earth in a flood? Why not send evangelists to preach to the unbelievers instead? Unless, of course, the fallen angels polluted the bloodline, the DNA of the line of humankind or Adam. Duh. You know? <sighs> Why did Israel... Why was Israel commanded to kill all the Canaanites and the giant Philistines like Goliath, who were one of the tribes of the Canaanites? And the flood of Noah. Why? Why? Let's read Zephaniah 2.5. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan. O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee. I will even destroy thee. What? But Lord, you love everybody. Send them evangelists. Tell them about the love of Jesus. No, doesn't say that. I will even destroy thee that there shall be no inhabitant. Can anybody explain to me with a wealth of their Bible knowledge why God commanded Israel to exterminate all the Canaanites and the giant Philistines? You know, like Goliath and David. How about Deuteronomy 20 and verse 17? But thou shalt utterly destroy, destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Hmm. Numbers 21, 3. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities, 
and he called the name of the place Hormah. Why did the Lord not tell Joshua, please send evangelists to tell them the ways of the Lord? God loves you people. He loves you and he wants you to be saved and believe in Jesus. No. The Lord commanded they all be killed. Why? Is God some kind of cruel SOB? No. They're satanic hybrids. They were never supposed to be born in the first place. Zechariah 14.21 Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seeth therein. And in that day, and in that day, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Did I quote anything from Enoch? No, only the Bible. Read that again. No more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So when people tell you that the sons of God were the Sethite, Adamite sons of God, that makes the Lord sound like he's a homicidal, an evil homicidal maniac wanting to kill all the Canaanites whose only sin was being born of unbelievers. Think about it. This is the nonsense that they teach in churches today. Or were they the fallen angel satanic human hybrids, as Job 38 tells us? I think you get the idea. I hope so. You know, but what do I know? I'm just some clown that's been reading the Bible for a couple of times, you know? And by the way, people, this is, this is not new knowledge. This was common knowledge prior to the sellout of the clergy. It may not be a salvation issue, but it explains why the great evil in the world today and who is behind it. You think Goliath was just some tall NBA prospect? Really? Why did future King David kill Goliath instead of preaching to him the love of God? People died to give you the Bible. And most people will not even bother to read it. The Bible starts in Genesis, not in the New Testament. I mean, really, you know. Ugh. So, I don't know. It's just. So, here it is. Let's take a look at a couple things. In John 1.14, Jesus is the called the only begotten Son of God. In Luke 3, verse 38, Adam is called a son of God since God created him. In 1 John 3, 1, uh, believers do not become sons of God till they are born of the Spirit. So, you know, think about it. Who is the father of the angels? Would they not be sons of God also? When you read Job chapter 1 and verse 6, says, now there was a day, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Uh, you, you, you know, ugh, it, it angers me. It angers me when people... You, you show them all this stuff, and they're, well, I, you know, I'm on the fence about it. I don't know. So God's a homicidal maniac that just told Israel to go in and kill all the Canaanites. Because he's a, he's a homicidal maniac, huh? Okay. And then a couple thousand years later, when Jesus is born, you know, Jesus is like, well, you know, I, I wanted the Jews to... To be my chosen people, but they rejected me. So I'm up in heaven, biting my fingernails, thinking, "Oh, I gotta have a, a some people that love me." So I guess I'm gonna go to the Gentiles and I'll save the Canaanites. This is the nonsense taught in churches today. Really, it is. So Matthew twenty-two thirty. Now this is another one of our favorite things. They'll say. Angels can't have sex. It says that in the resurrection, they're not 
they can't marry. Okay, let's read that. For in the resurrection, Matthew 22, 30, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God, and that's where they stop. See, the angels of God, they can't marry, they can't have sex, they can't have children. But they leave out those last two words. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But are as the angels of God in heaven. Well, guess what? Not all the angels are in heaven. Some were cast out. Read Revelation chapter 12. I beheld Satan as lightning as he was cast from heaven. Didn't we read that earlier? Uh, yeah, we did. Okay, Chaplain Bob. I was just checking to make sure, you know. Yeah, we got we to gotta, we, we, we gotta keep, keep an eye on you. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out, cast out into the earth, and his angels and his angels were cast out with him. Hmm. It's funny how the deceivers always leave those two words out of a Bible verse that proves them wrong. Oh, yeah. So. Does that make any sense now? Yep. Zechariah 14.21 and in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Why? Because the Lord's going to destroy them all. They're going to be wiped from the face of eternity. And the earth, too. Yeah. So, this is kind of like the introduction for verse uh, chapter 6 of the book of Enoch. You notice I haven't even quoted Enoch once. Not one time. Yeah. Yeah. Believers marry unbelievers. Oh, no. Believing men, righteous holy men, marry unbelieving wicked women, and they have giants for children with six fingers and six toes. And then God says, kill them all. Yeah. Yeah, and they want you to think that that's rightly dividing the word of truth with dispensational theology. Uh, I don't think so. You know, in time past, who our children married was considered important. Nowadays, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You know, we're, we're all the same. We're all from Adam, or we're all from Noah, you know. Uh, it's vile. It really is when you think about it. So, all right. Well, this is the introduction to chapter six of the book of Enoch. I'm going to read the book of Enoch now, so. Alrighty, take care.